What's going on everyone? Today we are breaking down 35 Apex Legends tips and tricks to help you master season 15 in full force and help you out duel the competition. Let's get right to it. Our first tip is actually something I don't think I have ever seen anyone else do. Just how long is it gonna take you to get to the center of the map from those edge spots? I have outlined on screen the fastest traveling paths from those corner POIs all the way to the middle where North and South Promenade is. Memorizing these numbers is a good baseline to know when you have to rotate from those corner POIs or you will get swallowed up by the ring. It's also the fastest travel paths that you can get right now. Just keep in mind that this is in a perfect world and it's gonna assume you won't have any fights or issues when traveling. Ideally, you should give yourself an extra 30 to 60 seconds, depending on how far the ring is, or if you think you are gonna have a fight. You've probably started to realize there are a few spots on Broken Moon that have this bluish glow to prevent you from falling to your death or taking some damage like you would on World's Edge. The most significant spot is around the core. If you are in the middle looking for a swift exit, you can slide out and onto the sides as pictured here on screen. This will prevent you from getting that slowdown effect and pretty much just getting beamed as you are floating through the air. Second to this is just to know that you can keep all these areas in the back of your mind and you can use them as alternate rotation options if you are in a real bind and you can't use the zip lines or maneuver around them. Everyone is talking about Catalyst and it is rightfully so, but I do want to point out a few big tips from other legends that you can use to counter her. While I think Mad Maggie is a little bit on the weaker side, there's no denying that her passive of highlighting enemies for a brief moment is absolutely insane when you are fighting around a Catalyst ultimate wall. Tagging an enemy with your fire will reveal them and you'll be able to easily track your shots through that dark abyss of Catalyst wall. We all thought Seer's ultimate was going to be canceled out by Callus Wall, but it appears that is not the case. Seer's tactical is still blocked by Callus Wall, so that is a nice counter. However, Seer's passive heartbeat sensor still tags and picks up enemies through the wall, which means you can still track and have some sense of where to fire your weapon. Another real nice counter to Catalyst Wall is going to be Crypto. You can send Crypto's drone through Catalyst Wall or just above it and you'll be able to get continuous scans on enemies on the other side, which means free shots while they are tagged. A quick tip for her passive in the spikes. For one, shooting around the spikes and on the ground does nothing to destroy it. The only way to break through this is by shooting down the orb that sits in the middle and floats slightly above the ground. This makes quick work of these traps and it's going to help remove the slight audio pulse that does linger around. I definitely recommend removing the spikes as fast as you can so you can hear footsteps on Audio and it isn't getting mess. For whatever reason, Catalyst Audio with her abilities really does mess up the game quite a bit, so getting rid of these abilities is definitely gonna help you. The second tip for Catalyst is that she can actually sling the spikes very similar to how players would vert nade. This is a great tip to help get enemies peeking on heights back up or slow them down and get a little damage while you push up or follow up with an actual vert nade. It's happened a few times for me, but a huge PSA and tip to look out for is to watch out when you are fighting around an enemy Catalyst reinforced stores. Catalyst and her squad can still open those black doors and it makes for a real easy counterplay when they do see you back off of the door because you don't want to waste that extra time to kick the door down. Now more than ever, it is vital to always have a grenade so you can quickly break the doors down and breach in. If you are new to Apex Legends, there has never been a better time than right now to learn the zip line super jump and now the zip rail jump. Broken Moon has an insane amount of zip lines and zip rails that makes having this technique in the back of your pocket absolutely vital. The main benefit of this is that you will get a substantial amount more height when you are jumping off of the zip. It's performed by attaching to a zip line or rail and then instantly double tap jump as fast as you can. Doing this successfully will launch you up. I again stress the importance of this because there are so many spots where you can use this jump to quickly get to roofs of buildings or other ledges without having to do the climbing animation. Landing on Broken Moon is still being developed, but I can already tell you the hot drop spot is absolutely terraformer. The top of this POI really does have a solid amount of loot and it's kind of split up between three or four sides, a top middle level and a bottom middle level. You'll want to land here if you do want a nice chance at dropping a 20 bomb. The backup spot for me seems to be the core cult Division and Atmo Station, but this seems more so depending on the dropship path. Looting on Broken Moon is actually pretty great compared to what we have seen in the past from other maps, but some POIs can still be slightly sparse. One thing that you do need to know is that the center of most of these POIs on Broken Moon have a ton of loot and some of it is even high tier. I do have a few spots to recommend for you though. For starters, the back of production yard is absolutely wild. Not only does a beacon spawn here a lot of the time, meaning you can get instant ring information, the amount of floor loot is absurd and it does have a few pills as well. I'm also very fond of the two small buildings and one large building on the north side of the core. Most people are going to the center or to the two large side buildings on the southeast and not flying over the central core area. The third I do want to recommend is all of the bottom levels of Terraformer. Not only is the center of this area incredibly hot, meaning easy access to kills, the lower platforms seem to be fairly reliable spot to get a fine amount of loot and get a quick third party in there. And the fourth and final spot to check out is going to be the buildings around Cultivation. These buildings are pretty large and you'll have four different building options 
positions to land at, which means a pretty good chance at separating yourself from enemies and getting some great loot in there. It's worth giving a slight mention and some tips as to how to use the RE45 with a little bit more effectiveness, and this really comes down to understanding how the gun works. It used to be in an odd spot that really only had the benefit of the handling, but with the damage buff and now adding disruptor rounds plus buffing up the magazine size a little bit, it is no slouch. And it's crazy good. It's one of the best close range, if not the best close range weapon in the game. You can kill a 200 shielded enemy with 13 rounds to the body, which means just getting one, maybe two headshots in there does give you the capability to drop down two enemies with a singular mag on this little pistol, and you already have that crazy fast draw time and excellent handling. The time to drop enemies is only like four to five percent faster than the car SMG, but if you are team shotting with your friendlies, disruptor rounds is going to make very quick work of those enemies. The next big thing is a PSA and a tip for the Rampage. If you are unaware, the Rampage straight out of the care package now comes charged up. I still think that the Rampage is overly not that great of a weapon to use, all game long at least, but if you are fighting around a care package, which does happen fairly often because it is a spot of congestion, you may be wise to pick it up and quickly use it to mow some enemies down since it is charged up and ready to go. A second thing to this, and one thing that you may not have realized is that both the Rampage and now the Sentinel actually function slightly different with their charge up features. The Rampage will never lose a charge unless you are actively firing it, which is great to extend its use and not waste its power. As for the Sentinel, it might just be a placebo effect, but it seems that the charge up from the Sentinel loses its charge a little bit slower right after you do charge it up, which will be a little bit more friendly when you are opening a fight as you charge it up a little bit earlier and you don't need to worry about it going down pretty quickly. And both of these guns will now let you charge up before their current charge is out, which is also nice if you are about empty and you don't want to wait for the charge to go away or you don't want to just shoot rounds to have that charge go away. We still have a lot more to talk about, but if you are enjoying the video, do me a huge favor and hit that like button. Also, consider subscribing for more content that we do have in the way. And you can hop into my community Discord. You can find others to play with in there, chat with myself and the community. I do want to suggest a couple spots that are highly fortifiable for you ranked grinders out there. The first is going to be cultivation and in general the donut type buildings that are on Broken Moon. I'll go one step further to say that specifically the large building in the center of this POI is very good. There is a very limited access to the underneath central area as there's only two doors to get access to this middle from the inside. All the smaller buildings around are also pretty good but they're not quite as high and the center is not quite as fortifiable. The main reason these buildings are so good though is that you can stand on the sloped part and absolutely get crazy head peaks on those that are around you and under you. The second spot is the majority of the zip rail stations. These stations are already perched with a vantage point over a lot of the surrounding low grounds, and many of these have protection from the back due to where they are positioned next to the mountains and other terrain. If we look inside the buildings and specifically on the bottom floor, it's extremely good. There's only a couple doors to get access on the ground floor, and there is the back stairway, which allows for great visuals while also having a complete safe spot. The upper floor has four doors, and this can be a problem, and the best thing you can do is to try to keep enemies away from the building completely by utilizing some head glitching from the balcony, but if needed, trapping up those doors with a defensive legend like Catalyst or Caustic's gas is also going to be pretty great. Since I did mention having a defensive legend, it is worth taking a brief second to mention some really optimal team compositions for this new map and season. If you are less confident in your killing capability, something like Valkyrie, Watson, or Caustic, and Newcastle is really great at having some fortification, some support, and some rotation power. A more killing friendly squad is going to be Seer, Catalyst, and Horizon, as you do have support-esque type capabilities, recon to track, and kill players and then you do have horizon who can help in some rotational aspects and is a complete bomb when it does come to being a fighter people seem to be struggling a bit in terms of how to get more mid-game fights or they are going to the end without finding players this really comes down to three things you have to be focused when you are in the dropship the direction you are coming from matters a lot more on this map than other maps i'm finding and you should be paying attention during this if you do this you'll have a better idea as to where enemy teams should and will be rotating this is kind of basic apex knowledge and a tip that really works on any map but it is worth reinforcing. The second is that I am hearing people say it takes forever to rotate on foot. I don't know why I need to say this, but Broken Moon has zip rails. If you aren't playing to the map's strengths and landing or rotating around on these, then that's more on you than the map. The third is going to be your rotation. This will massively affect how many fights you get, but if you want a for sure spot where people are going to just move to, you need to be going to south and north promenade in the middle, obviously. It's also worth stating that if you want to avoid fights, you shouldn't travel through this middle POI, or you need to be making sure you are quickly passing by and not getting held up by looting in here. It's just a death trap, I find, and you're better off staying on the side and fighting and poking those people that are in the middle. I have quite a few tips and tricks for the zip rails, but the first being is the attachment points. Every square icon on the map is a spot with a small jump pad to boost yourself up onto the rail. The second is that mobility legends like Horizon Pathfinder have a huge leg up as they can instantly tactical up and reconnect themselves at any time, greatly speeding up rotations and the flexibility of them. If you aren't a movement legend though, don't fret. You still have a lot of spots on this map that you can't climb 
climb up to and get access to reconnect yourself to the rails. If you haven't experienced it yet, when traveling on the zip rails, you need to have a keen eye looking forward as enemies going in the opposite direction will have collision with you and they are going to force both of you to fall to the ground and be in a little skirmish. When coming out of the zip rails, I find it's better to jump off right before you do get to the end. There's a brief slowdown period when you are exiting the rails and by jumping off, you can better slide yourself and keep your momentum up. And this is especially true if you are approaching someone at the end and you are looking for a fight. You can breach into their area pretty quickly if you do jump off just a brief second before. The audio this season seems to be messed up more than normal, but you will want to be intently listening for a humming sound. You can hear enemies traveling on the zip rails from quite far away, and this humming is more than likely someone on a zip rail. There's a couple additional very specific landing spots and looting spots I do want to mention that are in relation to the rails. The first is the southeast and west of Atma Station. These rail stations easily give you access to the entire east side of the map and easy rotations to get yourself all the way across the map to the alpha base. And much like we discussed earlier, you can also get to the center of North and South Promenade very fast as well. Second of this is going to be the south side of Foundry. You can quickly travel to the hot drop of Terraformer or again, South Promenade from here. Moving on, we have a couple specific tips that you need to be aware of when it comes to how to use Catalyst Ultimate. For one, placing the ultimate down can kind of make it get stuck on many objects. If you are placing the ultimate down and the height of it is not clearly above or close to the object you are putting it near, it's just going to get stopped short as the game is just going to think it's a wall, which it is. You can use this to your advantage though by intentionally stopping the ultimate short or placing it more strategically at an angle so you are missing said wall. But the kicker and the real tip is that the wall actually has some climbing type properties. If you pay close attention like I am here on screen, you can see the light bluish path is actually hinting to me that it's going to be able to climb up the jagged edge of the wall and thus it's going to go up the wall and continue going forward on the flat surface. A second tip to the ultimate is that it's pretty clear that the wall has some visibility to create cover when crossing open areas, but I find it it's almost better suited when you can completely close off alleys in buildings or canyons in more narrow outside locations. This almost provides you with a complete reset opportunity as it's very bad for enemies just to blindly walk through the wall. It's worth stating that the biggest counter to Catalyst Ultimate beyond what we spoke on earlier with the other legends is that Catalyst herself, both enemy and friendly, don't get affected much really at all by friendly or enemy walls. A quick and simple PSA for you is that if you are coming back to Apex for the first time or you are looking to unlock another legend, you can try them out in the firing range for the first time ever before you unlock them, which is pretty cool. The Massive has returned to the floor for season 15, but I find that the stiff is in a real weird spot right now. It's good, but I think SMGs and the meta we are in as a whole, it's conducive to leaving the Massive behind. Your damage potential from crafting something like a Peacekeeper, at least in the first split, is much higher, mainly due to the fact that the horizontal spread of the Massive's outside two pellets means you are going to very often cap your damage at 66 or so, and at this point, using the EVA makes a ton more sense. With this, let's briefly talk about the weapons that you should be using. Shotguns, like I said, as a whole are okay, but SMGs are definitely going to be supreme. The car SMG is still king, but the additional bullet getting added to the R9 also increases its total damage output. The Volt had a nerf, but in reality, it feels really similar to what it was. It just has a little bit less range, which is supposed to stop players from using it like an assault rifle. Ultimately, don't be afraid to run the double spray combo like the R400 combo. I said it at the start of season 14 when we had buffs to the 3030 and the return to the G7 and the skull piercer are coming back, but now we also have the triple take getting buff and the anvil receiver being back. We have definitely accelerated the fact that we are a little bit more in a long range meta. Not to mention Broken Moon seems very friendly to these weapons as well. One big tip is to not sleep on the double tap to G7. There's very little recoil to this thing in this mode and you can really decimate enemies, especially if you're getting double heady in there. In order to better understand Broken Moon, you need to know that there's an overarching massive theme to the map. If it looks like you can go there, you probably can. There's very few real out of bounds spots on this map, so be creative with your use of all these rooftops, ledges, and high ground areas to better make plays and just prevent people from making plays on you. Be sure to check out my brand new guide on Apex Legends right here so you can better understand how to get those wins. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.